Hi, this is Lauren. Welcome to Craft Some Joy. All right, my friends, grab your favorite beverage because we are going to talk about this little gem today. I'm going to give you some quick tips and a little tutorial on how to print fantastic photographs right from the comfort of your own home. So take a sip and let's get started. Mm. Okay, so I want to first just start off by saying that I am not a professional. This is a complete disclaimer. I do not claim to be a professional photographer or a professional printer, and I know there are plenty of wonderful people out there on different channels that can give you absolute expert advice, but I am actually going to come to you from a perspective of a scrapbooker or a crafter or just someone who wants to get a handle on their photos at home. And one thing I can tell you is that I am picky when it comes to photographs. And I think I kind of started early on uh, being picky because uh, I remember back in the days of film when I used to get my pictures and I used to go to Ritz, anybody familiar with Ritz? And I'd get my rolls of film developed and I would stand there open them up right away. And, you know, if they weren't up to my standards, I would ask them to redo it and adjust to this color. And there's a fleck of um, dust right there. Could you reprint that one? Right? So anybody understand where I'm coming from, you know that um, pictures are super important. And then what I realized, I was actually making this album that I'm flipping through right now. This was a road trip that we did in 2013 up to uh, Glacier National Park in Yellowstone. And I realized that now fast forward into the digital age, we've got more photos than we know what to do with. And many of us are not getting them printed until we're ready to work on an album such like this. And so when I was uh, working on this album, what I did is I got some prints done from different places, from Shutterfly and from Impix, and I just was realizing I still wasn't happy with a lot of the different color quality or the photograph quality of my prints. And so then I kind of took another look into the world of printing from home, did some research, and that's when I came across kind of this uh, combo that I've come up with that I really, really like. And you can see uh, from the results from my pictures in my album, I'm really happy with them. And not all of these pictures are printed at home. I did use some of the ones that I'd already printed. But I'll tell you, I did end up reprinting the majority of these photographs because when you go on a fantastic trip like this and you want to spend the money and the time to make an album, your photographs are really the whole important part of it. I mean, you guys get it, right? So I did invest in reprinting a lot of photographs and just so that I was happy with the results and I was happy with the photos that were going to go into this album. I still have my journaling to do, so no judgment there, please. <laughs> but I do have the majority of the photos installed into this album, and um, I'm really, really happy with how it turned out. So now I just want to share some of the things that I've learned along the way from learning how to print at home and the paper and the printer and different suggestions I have for uh, getting your photos to look as good as possible when you print from home. And um, I'm going to show you what I use and how I do that. I thought I could also get into editing in this video, but I really didn't want it to go super, super long. And editing, I think, is a whole topic in itself, but I do edit my photos. I'll just mention that it is really important just to take a few extra minutes, especially when you're printing uh, travel photos or just you know those special photos, to just spend a couple extra clicks and go ahead and edit those photos so you get the best photo you can. 
And this is especially because, you know, ink and paper are not cheap. So you wanna make sure that before you actually hit the print button, you've got a good photograph. So without going into all the details, I do wanna just mention one important factor to remember. You're printing at home, so you're gonna be looking at your computer or you're gonna be looking at your iPad or your phone. Remember, all those devices, you're looking at a photograph with light coming through the background. So they may look fantastic on your screen, but when you get them in print, they may seem a little dark. So just a really quick tip to keep in mind when you are editing, always go for a little brighter than you might think because when you print, of course, there's no light shining behind your photograph. And so you need that extra kind of brilliance and exposure to make a really nice print. So I will get into more about editing and also maybe storing your photographs and um, some really good reasons why we should set up a schedule to print uh, because there are three ways you should be backing up your photographs. And one of them is on a hard drive or on a computer, on your computer or an external hard drive hooked up to your computer. The second is a cloud storage of some sort. And the third is to actually have a physical copy. And uh, in case anything happened, your computer crashed or whatever, you really do need a physical copy of your photographs, at least your absolute favorites, right? Okay, so we'll have more on that in another video. Okay, so that was a lot about why I decided to go ahead and start printing at home and a little bit about my journey on finding a good combination to get the results that I wanted for my photos. But I also just wanna take a minute here, and I know I understand some of you may not be ready to take this step and may not be ready to start printing at home, and it is a commitment. So I just wanna give you the information so that you have it in order to make an informed decision. And again, just one of the things that was so apparent to me when I was looking at the difference between what I could get from printed online versus what I could print at home, that's really, really what made the difference for me. So again, I'm just gonna kind of show you here. This one right here is what I printed online, and this is what I was able to print at home. And to me, the clarity and the color, and on this one, I ended up using kind of a metallic paper. It might be hard to pick up on the camera, but in person, it is gorgeous. It's really, really, really beautiful. So just to be able to see the difference in quality was, for me, just, that was a game changer. That really is what made me decide to just print at home. And among the other benefits of printing at home is not only can you control the color and the quality of your photos by choosing the printer and the paper, but you also are able to print on demand. So if I decide here, I want a five by seven, I can print it like that and go, wow, look at how that just goes right into my page. And if I wanted a smaller print, like a four by four or a three by three, I can print those too. So you might have a series of photographs and you wanna do a little series of smaller prints easy, easy peasy. And sometimes you don't know what you want print wise until you're into the creative process. And so just being able to have that control over the whole process of going from choosing your photos, making a few clicks and editing and printing exactly what you need for your page, it's, it's just fantastic. So I do recommend getting started on printing at home. Okay, so before we move on to how you can print and do this on your own at home, I do wanna make sure that I have addressed some of the issues that I could see coming up. One of those points I think I have kind of covered by showing you, and that is the quality perspective of what you can get online versus what you can get at home. Now, I know there are some of us that maybe just don't have the time. Time is always an issue. Uh, I have found that this really does take little time. By the time you go and select all your photos, there's not a whole lot of difference between 
clicking a button and having them come out of your printer right here at home versus sending off for them and then waiting for them in the mail. So time, that's debatable. But I think another issue really that does come up between printing online and printing at home is cost. And I know this is really kind of a question that has a, a lot of different variables in it. And so I don't know that I can speak completely to the cost because variables are going to depend on whether you buy your photo paper when it's on sale. Uh, there's quantity discount. So did you get a discount on your paper for the ink? Did you find a great ink supply? Is the extra large cartridges, are they a little less expensive than the regular cartridges? You know, what, what kind of budget do you have to get started and invested in the first place? So for it, it does take a little bit of an investment to get all the pieces together in order to print at home. I will absolutely say that's true. Uh, but in the end, the quality to me was what was most important and the control, being able to control the output and the quality of the prints that I uh, used to put in my albums or used to put up in my home or give away to friends. So those are all the reasons why it's really nice to have beautiful, beautiful photos. So that said, in my experience, when I looked at what it costs to print from a good quality printer online, and by a good quality printer, I mean an Mpix or a Persnickety Prints, by the time you pay for the print, or maybe a larger size or this or that and pay for shipping. And then it's always the waiting. But by the time that came around and I got those back and then I might have to reorder some because I didn't have the right things selected or so on. That versus printing at home, I think it's really a wash. For me, it was a wash between the cost of doing a good online service versus printing at home. Now, I'm also going to let you know that um, Red River Paper, that's the paper that I do recommend, has a wonderful, thorough, thorough website, which gets into a lot more detail about cost and different resources that you can have uh, when you do print at home. So I would also just recommend if you are interested uh, and you want to really make sure that you spend your money well and that this is a choice that you want to make for yourself that you do do a little bit of your own research and find out. Okay, so enough of me trying to convince you. If you've stayed with me this long, then I know you probably just want to know the how. All right, so let's talk about the how. And for me, there really are three factors as to how you get that great photo and that great print. So the first factor is your camera. And Janet over at RTS Scrapbooking, I love the way she puts it. Really, if you wanna get a better photo, you've gotta get a better camera. And for a lot of us, what that means is a better phone. And I am an advocate of the iPhone. I use my iPhone all the time. And when they make inv advancements in the camera, I'm all over it because to me, that is what I have always with me, always ready to take a great photo. And it's so handy and so convenient. So again, whatever is in your budget, I would get the best quality that you can afford on a phone with a really excellent camera. As I mentioned, I, I won't get up on my Apple soapbox for very long, but the new iPhone with the third lens and the ability to do portrait mode and wide angle and night mode, it is absolutely fantastic. It's a game changer. So if that is at all within your realm of possibility, definitely, definitely look at investing in a great, great phone, which gives you a great, great camera. Okay, so that's the first thing. You've got to have a good way of capturing the photo. And the second thing is having a good paper. When I was looking into printing at home, what I ended up finding was one company kept coming up over and over again, and that was the Red River Paper Company. 
So when I was doing my research, I decided to give this company a try. In the beginning, what I ended up doing was I ordered two packs of paper. These are my original two packs. And one of them was the Inkjet Photo and Fine Art Sampler Sample Kit. And this one is the Scrapbookers Sample Kit. And this had 12 by 12 size paper. And within each of these boxes, there were all different kinds of paper. There was art paper, metallic, luster, glossy, you name it, that, that kind of paper was in here. So I practiced with different types of paper and printing and seeing what I liked. And that's how I came up with two types of paper that were, that ended up being my favorite. So as you've seen how I have these organized, I do purchase this paper in both 4x6 and 5x7, and I do have some of the larger sizes, but these are in both the metallic, the Pro Luster Metallic, and also the 80 pound Ultra Pro Luster paper. So why metallic? Okay, the metallic, it might be really, really difficult to see on camera, but I'm gonna keep spinning this and maybe you'll catch it. It has kind of a golden metallic luster to it. It's very understated. And what I found in certain circumstances, this paper just gives a glow to your photos that you really just can't get from a plain white paper. And so I used a lot of this in our European travel album because the sunsets and the metal on the Eiffel Tower and those kind of photographs really just lit up when I printed on the metallic paper. The majority, you don't have to go this way. I kind of like having this in my arsenal when I do want to print that special photo. Most of the time, it is the 80 pound pro luster paper that I reach for over and over again. This is just gorgeous paper. Let me tell you a little bit about the ultra pro luster. It is not a glossy paper. It is a luster paper. So what that means is that it's a little bit of a matte look to it, but it is gorgeous when the ink comes on and makes your photograph. It has a little bit of a tooth to it. So the richness and depth of color that you can get with this paper is just phenomenal. And I can show you all of my albums and show you on the camera what they look like, but every single time someone sees my album in person, they go bananas over my photographs. And I know it's because of this paper and the printer, which I'm going to get to next. Okay, so um, I will have links to the Red River, the two papers that I like in the more box in the description. So make sure you click that button if you want to go straight to the Red River site and order your paper there. But this is phenomenal. Even if you have a, a inkjet that you're already using, try this paper because it's a game changer. Really amazing. Okay. I also want to mention, since I am a scrapbooker and a crafter, that I did have to explore the option of being able to print and use that 12 by 12 borderless capability to print digital designs at home as well. And uh, this is a collection that I created a little while ago call, called Party Boy. And I just kind of wanted to play around with the printer and see what it could do. Uh, for me with my digital designs. And they, I, I was really impressed. So again, with the scrapbooker sample kit, I found that the best paper for printing digital designs was a matte photo paper. And I'll be sure to leave a link for that paper as well. But it was so fun to be able to print these designs and kind of see how the colors would come out. And just as I expected, the Canon color quality is phenomenal for these. These are some pre-designed border strips that um, I just printed on a 12 by 12 and then I cut them separately. Again, here's some more strips, decorative strips to use with that page. And then I ended up printing 
a sheet of the paper and then a little sample sheet of the paper and kind of loading different other pieces on my 12 by 12 just from the digital file. And then I printed the whole thing in borderless. So you can kind of see it goes end to end. And then all I have to do is cut this apart and then I have some wonderful pieces to build a page with. So, uh, so even in the realm of the crafting world and being able to use the 12 by 12 borderless feature, thoroughly impressed, thoroughly impressed uh, with this, with the paper and the printer capability. Okay, so now we get to talk a little bit about the third part to creating great pictures at home, and that really is the printer. And some of you may have your own photo printer, but I do wanna just go over this printer, which I found and I absolutely love. I just wanna say that I have actually had quite a few, that I think this is about my fifth inkjet photo printer that I've owned, and it's by far my favorite. And of those, I also do have the Canon Pro 100, which is an amazing, beautiful, monstrous beast, but it also does not print 12 by 12 borderless, much to my dismay when I found that out. So anyhow, that was one of the reasons why I went back and looked for another printer that did print 12 by 12 uh, borderless. And this is the printer that I found after doing a lot of research and reviews, and I have actually been really, really happy with it. So this is from Canon. I, I really do like Canon printers and Canon ink. I also have a Canon camera, so I do really like the Canon brand. And this is the TS9521C. Now, they also kind of call this the TS9500 series that comes in black, it comes in white, but I did like the white, so this is the one I chose. They have a lot of different programs, packages. I'm gonna leave a link for one that I think is a good deal, but definitely do your own research and see where you can find the best deal on this printer if you're looking for one. So I'm gonna give you a little tour of just this little guy right here. So first, I kinda wanna just show you about how big this printer is. Okay, so we're looking here at about 18 inches wide and about 16 inches deep. And then the height on this is about eight inches. Okay, so if you've seen my craft room tour, you know that I have mine sitting on a little printer stand just behind my desk area. It is wireless and so you don't need this plugged into your computer if you do have um, Bluetooth set up in your home and wireless set up in your home. All you really need is a power cord and you're good to go. So I'm gonna just show you a little bit more about this printer. It's not really a big, huge, huge printer. It's, it's actually a really nice manageable size. Okay, so let's go ahead and start by just turning the power switch on. Super easy. It does have kind of this flap that goes up and down and it tells you when it's down too far that you need to pull it up. It is kind of a little weird, but you get used to it. The power button's right here, and then it has this little LED screen. And then the paper, it actually has two paper trays, which I really, really love. One is here in the back, and this is where we you put your photo paper. So you can see I have my four by six photo paper loaded back here. This is the Red River paper I just mentioned and uh, it has this little flap, and I'm gonna show you what happens when you open this flap, put in your paper, and close your flap. Now the LED screen is gonna say, oh, hold on, did you just do something? And did you just change the paper? And right now it thinks that I have five by seven paper in there because I actually did have five by seven in there, but now I have four by six, so I'm gonna go ahead and hit change and you can see another menu comes up where you can scroll to all the different paper sizes that they offer, and they even offer square, which is awesome. You can do 12 by 12, four by four, eight by eight. It's wonderful, all the different selections. Kind of knows that you're a crafter. This is made for crafters. So I'm gonna go ahead and pick the four by six, and then it gives you all the different types of paper that you can choose from your scroll down menu. 
For this Red River paper, the Pro Luster is the best choice for telling the printer how to print. So I'm going to say, yes, it's four by six Pro Luster. And then the printer does all its magic and gives you the best setting for that. Now underneath this little LED screen is the tray for when the print comes out and through the printer and then the print will end up right here in the tray. So while we're here, I also just wanna show that there is a second tray for paper and that is right under here. And this is where I just keep plain uh, printer paper. And that is a beauty of this machine is that it's also, you can just print regular prints on regular paper and it doesn't have to use the photo process, process for uh, printing. So it does have both of those. When you open that, it gives you the screen. Oh, could you please confirm what you have in that tray? And I am gonna say yes, it's letter and plain paper in there. And it'll set that up for you. Now I also just wanna point out that this is not only a fantastic photo printer and regular printer, but it also copies and scans. So it does have a document feeder right here where you can just slide in if you wanna uh, copy several pages at once. And then it does have a bed right here where you can scan photos. And I have actually used the scan feature. It's fabulous. It is, I, I really can't tell a difference between this and my fancy schmancy just scanner, which is just, you know, made for scanning. So this does a fantastic job. I have found that um, for scanning though, it does, for me, it worked best when I was plugged into uh, my computer. Okay, so that's all about the Canon TS9521C printer. It is definitely my favorite. I did just purchase this over the summer and this is 2019. So I've had it about six months now and I've used it quite a bit. I've printed all of my photos for several albums and it has really created some gorgeous, gorgeous prints for me. Now, one last thing is that we can't really talk about an inkjet photo printer without talking about ink. And so I just wanna show you here the ink cartridges. This one, I think it'll move over here when it decides to work here. All right, there you go, you can see them now. It does have five different ink cartridges and these are photo quality ink. A little bit about ink. I do know that there's a lot of channels, a lot of people who talk about how to refill ink and the different ways you can save money. I ended up using the Canon ink just because I was so pleased with the quality of the photos that I just didn't want to do anything different. I did end up switching to the extra large cartridges for the ink and those really have seemed to last quite a while. I can usually print at least an album's worth and I'm talking like, oh, a few hundred photos <laughs> uh, just with the same ink. So for me, this has really worked out. Now, if you'd like to get some more information on the cost of ink and uh, the cost per print, I'm gonna send you to Red River Paper and there's gonna be some links in my description that'll give you some information about that paper and that paper company. And they have done an extensive amount of research on printing at home, of course, because they're a paper company. They wanna sell you their paper so you can print at home but they have a wealth of information on what it costs to print and the different types of source resources they have. So that's where I would send you if you want a little more information about cost and uh, you know just kind of do it yourself. But I really, really enjoy having this printer as part of my craft space. So there it is. So now that we've got this warmed up, let's take it out for a spin and go ahead and print a photo. I'm just gonna hit the print button. I've got one set up to come through and you can see it's already talking with my printer. It gives me a view here of my ink levels.
there it goes. Ah, sometimes I, I'm actually glad this happened. Sometimes this does uh, give you this message and that means this little flap is in the way. So it just wants you to lift it up a little bit more and then you can hit okay. printer's going to take a little bit more pass, but you can see here we have it. And there's the print. Hot off the press. And don't forget, once you print your photos and once you get your photo paper, you need to keep that organized. And these are some of my favorite little containers that you can check out on some of my videos, the craft room tour and my five favorites. And I talk about how I have all of these organized. And your printed photos, I love using the photo folders and I have a whole video and a free download that you can use that show in detail how to organize your printed photos with these little photo folders. Okay, well that was a lot of information. I'm so happy if you were able to stick with me until the end. Please do let me know if you have any questions. I'd be happy to share what I know and what I've learned from my process. And again, I am not an expert, but I am really picky. And so I hope this has been helpful to give you an idea of how to start printing at home or just some tips if you already do print at home. So until next time, I hope you take time to craft some joy. Take care.